Salvation is here. Whew. I tell you what, I, I don't know if you've been getting this this morning, but it has been phenomenal already. You know, th there are some weeks that, that, that you get up and, and you almost feel like, Lord, do I still need to preach? I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's been good. Somebody grabbed me out in the parking lot uh, last week after the service. I said, Pastor, I feel like I get a steak dinner every time I uh, come to church here. And, uh, and, and you do you just feel like you, you're just eating all the way in. And, you know, from that, uh, that second song that we did this morning, that new one, I Lay Me Down. Uh, whew, I tell you what, I am not my own. That, that is uh, just incredible. That, that's really what we spoke of last week. I, I, I was in here with the group on, uh, on Wednesday as they were rehearsing, and I was listening more to all the instruments and blending, and I didn't really take time to listen to the words. And this morning I'm sitting there singing the words. I thought, oh, my goodness, that's a good song. That's, uh, that, that, that is the word. And now here, here's the key for us as we go through. We've got to make sure that we are open to receive from God every moment that we're walking with God. See, part of what we're doing is we are breaking off religious mindsets. See, our old religious mindset said, well, okay, now it's sermon time. Now I'm going to receive from God. <laughs> the reality is God's speaking to you all the time. You understand that this morning? It's not just, God doesn't just speak to you on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. He doesn't say, aren't you glad that's not the only time God speaks to you? You know, I was, uh, I was laughing with, uh, with some folks uh, earlier this week because I, I, uh, a week or two ago I was able to, my lease had run out on an old vehicle and so I had to, uh, to get a new vehicle. And uh, I, I found out that certain things have come a long way. When I, when I sat down in the vehicle with the salesman, he hit a little button on there and the car started talking to me. It, to, it welcomed me to the car and told me that I was now being paired with the car. I wasn't sure what to make of that. That's, and told me pairing is, and the, everything I'm doing, the, the car is talking to me. And, you know, I'm not used to a car asking me questions. Uh, you know, I don't know how many of you were ever into the old Andy Griffith show with Gomer Pyle, but, you know, you see his look on the face. Well, golly. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we've come a, a long way. And so, you know, I'm, I'm asking now, you know, I, I've noticed also that salesmen have a whole new way of selling cars to men. He just sat me in the car, showed me the basics of the gadget, says, I'll be back to, uh, to look over the paperwork, and left me sitting in the car with the gadgets for about a half hour. Now, if you leave a man sitting there with new toys and gadgets, you know what? It doesn't matter how much that car gets, any miles to the gallon and all the rest of it. I, the car's talking to me. Honey, we're going to buy this car. You know, it's, uh, they, they, they've found the way to get to a man's heart. You know, it's, it's, it's no longer the, the look and all the rest of it. It's the, the gadgets that are there. And so I'm, I'm, I'm playing with the things. That, and the guy comes back and, uh, and, and tells me, I'm asking him some questions. And uh, he says, you know, because I couldn't get the thing to, uh, uh, to talk back to me after a little bit. It stopped talking and stopped, uh, stopped communicating with me. And uh, he said this to me. He, he looked at me and said, well, he said, you're, you're talking the way that you always talk. You're not stopping to listen to what it's saying before you start talking. I thought, you know. That's not bad for marriage and for spiritual life. <laughs> See, that'll preach either way. You could, you could do e either one of those two. And then I, I'm, I'm walking around the thing, and, I, and I'm looking for the key to get in. And he says, you, you don't have to use a key for, for the car. Keys aren't necessary anymore. I said, not necessary. He said, yeah. He said, uh, he gave me a certain number of chips. He said, whoever you give these to will be a carrier, and when you are a carrier, you are known before you ever get there. Well, you know what? I'm going to stop watching TV preachers and just come to the car lot because it. <laughs> I, I, that, that's that stuff will. Pre you are known before you get there, and uh, I, I walk up to the car and, and, and it knows me. And if if you walked up today, it wouldn't open for you, but it'll open for me. It'll open for my wife. See, we just special. It's, but it. 
there, there, there's something in this where there's a whole new way of doing life. There, there's an importance of understanding connection. Now, if you're in the gadget world, it can be called pairing. It can be called syncing. Basically, what that means is when I get in, it recognizes my phone. And, and wherever I go, I can speak to it. And it does anything through my phone. It'll make phone calls. It'll play the music. What, whatever I have on me is, is what it will play at that point in time. Because there's a voice I have connected, and I am speaking the same language. Can I tell you that really when this all boils down in our walk with God, it becomes to, number one, connecting with God. If you're not connected with God, nothing else is going to work. Can I say that one more time? I appreciate that. If you are not connected with God, nothing else is going to work. It's just not going to, life is not going to go well for you. And, you know, I, the, the, as I said, the salesman connected me for the first two minutes, and then he walked away. And I started to, you know, go through, and I stayed connected for, for a few minutes, and then just started getting frustrated because I, I stopped connecting. I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to speak the language and, and wait on the, the timing that was there. And so there, there is a, a, a frustration. And some folks are going to church and going through the motions, but they are living in frustration because while we go through the motions, we're not connecting with the God of the church that we attend. We're simply going to his house. We're hearing about him. We're singing about him. But the connection between us has been lost. The pairing has become disconnected and we're walking around frustrated in life can i tell you this morning that god is not looking for us to be frustrated in life god's looking for you to live life and live it abundantly it's an abundant life in christ I, if you're ready to live in god would you just kind of wave at me this morning and say pastor that's me i want I, oh i want to be connected in god i want you to know something today there's only one person who wants you more connected with god than you do god himself wants to connect with you even greater than you want to connect with him if you think you're desperate for god he sent his only begotten son to die for me and to die for you. Not to just die, but to be made a sacrifice. He was sacrificially given so that we could be connected with God. How are you and I paired with God? We are paired through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are paired because of the love of God and the love of Jesus Christ. And today, as we come back and we simply say, Lord, I want that connection. God, I, I never want to be disconnected from you. I believe, and we're going to pray together as uh, when we close out today, I believe that God is going to stir some of you this morning, that there is going to be a stronger desire for connection. There is going to be a greater hunger for connection than ever before because when life comes, after your salvation experience, and we said it last week, after your salvation experience, the next part, it's all about walking with him. Everything else becomes about him.